So let's just take a look at this real quick. Um, the top little section mentions that as your project has three components. Okay. The first one is completed profit forms to be handed out to the class. Okay, now if you look below, you see a nice little outline of what that profit form is going to look like. Okay. Your profit form can take this kind of outline. You can pretty much just take this outline, paste it into a Word document, and fill it in. Okay. The more complete you fill it in, the better your grade will be. Right? So for example, look at number one is the setting. You have the political, economic, and religious settings. Right? The more kind of background and scope you can give us an understanding of what's going on historically for this time, the better your grade's gonna be. Now one thing that students often get kind of confused about with this section is they give the political, economic, and religious setting through the eyes of the prophet, but that's not what you're supposed to do for this. This is just what is the political situation of the time, okay? Who's king? Um, is there any conflict? Is there any upheaval as far as who's king? And, and is anybody trying to usurp the king, right? Um, the economic situation. What's the relationship between the rich and the poor? Um, the religious situation. All this, you're going, to kind of, you're going to have to look outside of the biblical text itself to get insight into what those different situations are. Um, then we have biographical information. That's going to be bio a biography of the prophet. Okay, so the dates of their ministry. Right, you can say for the dates, you can say the dates they lived and died, and you can also give the dates of their prophecy. Okay, the area and their origin of ministry, their class, occupation, education, their call. Okay, D, so 2D, a lot of biblical prophetic books will have included some kind of call, right? Some kind of narrative that the text gives where the prophet is actually called by Yahweh to prophecy. So point us to that. Tell us something about that. Um, and then type of prophet. And we'll kind of go over this a little bit when we get into looking, when we do kind of a general introduction to biblical prophecy. There's different kinds of prophets, and so you'll have to identify for us what kind of prophet we're looking at. Okay, look down to three. This is the text of the prophetic book. This is also something that you're going to have to do some background research, and we'll talk about where and how you can do that. But this is asking you about the condition of the Hebrew text itself. Are there pieces that have been put together that form this prophetic book? Um, what is our understanding of the text? Are there lots of rare words? Right? For example, there's some books in the Hebrew Bible that have a lot of words that only appear once. And a word, when a word only appears once, it's really hard for people, sometimes scholars, to figure out what those words mean. Right? So how many rare words are there? Because those words may greatly affect our understanding of the text. Um, kinds of material present, right? This is kind of going to be using your familiarity with grammatical criticism, right? Do we have songs? Do we have um, biography and autobiography, hymns, oracles, right? What kind of material is present? And then an outline of the contents. And I think actually in a lot of your Bibles and in the commentaries that you'll be looking at, they'll kind of provide an outline for you. And you can kind of copy that over, maybe like um, condense it for us a little bit so we're not looking at like a three-page outline of a book. So that's kind of the text. The fourth one is, number four, is where you're really going to have to start doing some work and some processing here, rather than just reporting. Okay, What is the main message of this prophetic work? right? And what are the smaller themes within that? Okay. And try to be specific with this. Right? Don't just be like, uh, you know, say, oh, the theme is that you should be a faithful Israelite. Right? That's not really, that's not going to be specific enough to what the prophet's actually saying. Each of these prophets are speaking into a very specific religious and historical setting. And so their message is going to be very specific to that setting. And so when you tell us about the message, you need to be kind of on point with that. And then also, what's the, what's the underlying theology behind that message? Right? As we've been looking through the Deuteronomic history, 
right? We've been seeing some of those themes, those underlying messages, that underlying theology that these books are working with, right? The underlying theme of obedience to Yahweh equals success. And that we know, or we, we can see obedience by faithful worship, right? Faithful worship means obedience, right? We're not really looking at, are you oppressing the poor, right, in the Deuteronomic history? We're looking at, are you faithfully worshiping, right? So that's kind of that theological underpinning to the books we're looking at now. What's the theology that the prophets are working from, or that your particular prophets are working from? And finally, key text. Are there any texts in your prophetic book that you can really point to and say, this, like this is a really good, like, if you, if you can kind of remember this text or this other text, gives you a really keen insight into this prophet and kind of like um, nicely encapsulates their identity and their message. Okay. So that's kind of the basic prophet form. Does anybody have any questions whatsoever about any of those points that are on there? Issues and questions. Huh? What's that? The issues and questions. Issues and questions, sorry. What issues and questions do you have after you've done all your work? Okay. Right? What are some still what are some things that you're still confused about? Or things that as you've done your research, you've noticed that a lot of scholars are still concerned about or still confused about? 